Satanism that we are going to talk about in this video is the simulation of the 3PRS robot using SimScap modeling environment in MATLAB. As we may understand from its name, it has three degrees of freedom and three joints, revolute, prismatic, and spherical, which are tools of both rotational and transitional motion. In parallel robots, we have a series of joints and links. In case of fixing them, they have to be set on the terrain from both sides, creating a loop that needs even less space. But due to some geometry constraints, the mathematical formulation of such a system would be more complicated than series robots. However, it is more accurate and rigid. In kinematics, we are in search of the end effector, having the magnitude of displacement and the rotation of the joints or vice versa. We will have a direct and a reverse method based on our approach toward achieving the end effector from the joints or achieving the joints from the end effector. In dynamics, we also have such a system, but the difference is that in dynamics, the relation between the end effector and the torque of the motor would be noticeable. In a control system, considering both kinematics and dynamics relations, and based on our inputs from sensors implemented in our joints, we will modify the torque of our joints so we might be able to maintain a desirable end effector. Which means, doing so, we can control the actuator motion based on the kinematics of the robot. We call such a system a closed loop control system. If we modify the angular motion of the joints without any feedback and doing so just like discrete dots, we have an open loop control system. In the simulation of robots, we have two primary approaches. One, based on the dynamics of the robots and functionalization of the system and implementing the proper controller we can use programming or, or toolbars in MATLAB or Simulink. The method we use in this simulation is in Simultibody, which also can be done in two different ways. First, consider the system of coordinates, just like a puzzle, we put all the joints and links together, or we can design the 3D structure of the robot using SOLIDWORKS. After maintaining the geometric constraints, we can export that to the MATLAB environment, and the MATLAB will organize and put together other boxes containing links. For moving the robots, we need to consider an operator for every joint as our input. By implementing position, velocity and acceleration vectors in our system, we may root our system. Moreover, by putting our sensors in the output, the reaction of the end effector will be visible from the scope. Our purpose is to simulate the robot in the simplest possible way. Firstly, based on the showing template, we design various parts of our robots, joints and links, and the end effector, of course, in SOLIDWORKS. And then we assemble them. Finally, we import it to MATLAB. At first, we draw three rays with S-square cross sections, 10 millimeter width and one meter elongation in moving prismatic joints, 
all inclined at 120 degrees with each other. Also, on every square shaped joint, we have a revolute joint. are just like a 15 millimeter diameter circle which will be elongate and for an end we have a revolute joint and the other end we will have a spherical joint. Additionally, for fastening the revolute joint to prismatic joint on the rail, we will notch rails. A very common error that SOLIDWORKS shows about the spherical joints was the incorrect choice of the shape during the motion and the open format of the chosen profile. The solution was considering a quarter of a circle with a full rotation. In the assembling part, again, all the links one by one will be added and put in their place. As the prismatic joint will be in the gap on the rail, applying geometric constraints. After that, we will make the 30 diameter end effector plate and make three 15 millimeter diameter holes on its circumference, which are just like rails and they inclined at 120 degrees with each other. As you can see, the robot is working correctly. We 
can also change the color of different parts of our robot and finalize the shape. Please notice, preventing the MATLAB or simulate body error while we are exporting our robot, we should open an empty space and then tools and then simulate body. And then we choose the file we are going to save. Now we have to wait for MATLAB to create all parts one by one. After that, we have to build an address for the SOLIDWORKS files and XML files in MATLAB. Notice, due to some slippery joints, and not having the constraints. After running the program, we may encounter a messy robot picture, and that is because in SOLIDWORKS, we had to maintain geometric constraints, only in direction of movement of joints. Otherwise, it was just like the joint was melded, and therefore they were not able to have any movement. After importing the structure to Simscape, we can go in to initialize and control the joint without the complexity of kinematics and dynamics of parallel robots. Some associates. As you can see, all the links and joints are simulated by MATLAB and located. So, for controlling the robot, production data structure, we need clock box, constants, sum, subsystem, sinusoidal waves and their radius. At first, with the trial and error method, we calculate the initial position of every joint. With the same approach, for every prismatic joint, we have an input position its first derivation, velocity, and its second derivation, acceleration. Doing so, we consider a constant one, music, one meter, a time wave, and a function that we calculate its sinus and cosine. We set them in separated subsystems. Here, at first, our inputs for prismatic joints have been chosen from forces and motions, and then the derivations are also added to the inputs. We can utilize a favorable gain or change the t in sinus or cosine for more modification in the motion. If we have some non-matching error, we can use the scope to find initial position and change the constant box. Here we may have a singular error, which means the force magnitude will be infinite and the robot's motion will be highly nonlinear, which makes it unsolvable for MATLAB. If the problem was not solved by changing the solver or the source of sinus and cosine waves, we have to initialize the location of joints SOLIDWORKS and fix them.
repetitive joints in SOLIDWORKS and fix them and define them as drive constraints. Again, we can import files. to notice that the domain of movement for every robot is restricted. It only accepts desirable output to the singular point. Also, we can adjust the graphical view of the robot from different viewpoints and save them in configuration and set some back and forth movement for the robot. Moreover, we can use the end factor and the reference transformations, which is constant, and by using sensors, we can assess the position, actual rotation, and Euler angles.
coordinates of the end effector motion is as shown here. As you can see, the movement of the plate is an oscillatory motion, which is ostensibly true. In the final file, the back and forth movement also has done, and the end effector diagram of such a motion is as we have shown here. The primary purpose of this project is to control a robot without the geometrical complexities. And if we want to do the controlling process in a closed loop, we have to define all the transformations locally in SOLIDWORKS. And the kinematic and dynamic equations also need to be verified.